Welcome to another Noble Review session for students of AP Economics. Last time we went over comparative advantage in trade. Today we're going to review the circular flow model. I told you last time that the circular flow model is the hottest model that you'll ever see in your life. That's because it incorporates just about everything that we do in this course. It's a system of incentives that shows how businesses and households respond to incentives through the factor market and product market. When learning to draw the circular flow model, it's important that you try really hard to understand it. One mistake that students make is that they just try to remember all the different name tags and labeling, and then they confuse it on the test the next day. Remember, a market is a place where buyers and sellers come together. So let's start with the factor market on the top. Here, the households are the sellers, and the businesses are the buyers. Households are selling the land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, the factors of production or economic resources, these become economic inputs to the business. The business incurs costs through the factor market because they have to pay for the resources. This becomes income to the household in the form of wages, salaries, rent, interest, and profit. In the product market, the roles are reversed. Households are buying and the businesses are selling. Businesses are selling goods and services through the product market to the households, and households are paying for them. They're consuming them. That consumption becomes revenue to the business. You might have noticed by now that in this depiction of the circular flow model, the monetary payments flow in a clockwise direction. Businesses are paying costs in the factor market for resources. That becomes income to the households. The households take that hard-earned income and they pay for goods and services in the product market and now the businesses have revenue. Non-monetary flows are going in a counterclockwise direction. Households are supplying resources in the factor market and those economic inputs will be used to supply goods and services in the product market. We can also add the government to the middle of our circular flow model. The government purchases goods and services from businesses and it also hires labor from households. The government also taxes businesses and households. In return, the government's providing public goods and services to households, as well as income payments, and the government provides services to the businesses as well, along with payments. Well, that wraps up the Noble Review on the Circular Flow Model. Now, this was just one representation of the circular flow. You might have learned it a little bit differently in class, and that's okay too. What's most important is that you do what works for you. I'll see you next time when we go over market equilibrium and supply and demand, the most famous words in economics.